So today's a new day. It got so rainy yesterday, we got so soaked. I had to moor up and get dry and sit by the fire, but it's now new day and the rain sort of stopped mid morning. So I'm going to set off now. It's very noisy here as well because of the traffic. So I'm going to set off now, try and find a nice quiet spot. Try and get a little bit nearer to Chirk. Back over the big aqueduct, I reckon. See you in a bit. So just so you know where you are guys, you are sat on the chimney of my boatsman's cabin fire. Now I have a fire in my main boat as well, but I also have one in this boatsman's cabin and it keeps the boatsman's cabin lovely and warm through winter. But at the moment you sit on top of there, so when I'm chopsing away, that's where you guys are. Now obviously in winter, I'm not going to be able to put you there because fire will be on. So I'm trying to think now where I'm going to put you guys. At the moment you're just on a little magnetic mount on top of my fire. Just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> so once we got back to the aqueduct, we couldn't go over it because there was boats coming this way, including the trip boat. And then there were boats behind me trying to turn right. The junction was absolutely rampant with boats, Anglo-Welsh boats, everything. So we just had to hover and wait really. So we're back on the amazing aqueduct. Coming back from this time, it's not as clear a day today, unfortunately, so it's a good job we got all that footage when we were canoeing. We've got jacks on board. <laughs> so one thing I did notice on this return journey is look at this. It's like a big sort of snapped bit out of the side of the aqueduct. It made me crap myself anyway, <laughs> but it's probably all right. Like it's amazing this, it's absolutely beautiful. You see all the birds flying below you, which is just absolutely amazing. So just pulled over in this location because there's a post office just up there. So I just pulled over. Jack is running up now to post these badge orders and then we'll be back on our way. What I actually really love about living on a boat is the community that's just wonderful. You get an eclectic mix of people and you end up making some really good friendships on the canals. Oh, I know you've been with me on my whole journey up the Langothlin and thank you for sticking with me on that. We're now on our way back down. But what I've noticed now, even though I did this just a few weeks ago, this journey, there's things I haven't seen before, like I didn't even know this factory was here. Let me show you. Just hidden away in the trees, smoking its head off. What is really lovely though, is because uh, we've had lots of rain, smells going through here. It just smells so uh, smelly. Have a sniff, go on. Oh, it just smells lovely. So it is spitting and I'm about to go through the tunnel. So I've put my twat hat back on, just in case a spider wheeze on me. <sighs> Take that off now. <laughs> at the moment but we're going to get to the end of this aqueduct and there's a sign that says welcome to England so this is the aqueduct that separates the Wales and English border how amazing is that Locking up. Can guess where we're going? Going to the pub. Oh! We're going to the pub. So the good thing is, is the pub is just down this hill. The bad thing is, is once we've had a few, we've got to climb up the bloody thing. 
So this is a view from the pub. Hee! Cheers, everybody! <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Morning, everybody. I've just got my phone. I've got my uh, GoPro, which you're on, and I've got my second brew. We're going off. Ugh. Let's go cruising. So because my engine is an air-cooled engine, I need to open my flaps so the breeze can flow through and keep it cool. So guys, I know I normally always do this at the end, but I'm going to do it in the middle this week. Just saying a massive thank you to those that support my channel by buying me a coffee each week. It really does help the channel. So a massive thank you to you guys. Your name should be along the bottom now. Anyway, let's go and start this engine and continue on our adventure. <laughs> last night and no I'm not hungover we only had one drink it was just a chance for Gareth and Lou and myself and Jax to meet up in a pub sit around the table have a drink and have a chat and we're, we're making a plan to where we're going to go next when we leave the Langothlin will we go straight on will we go right will we go left the thing is I've already been left I've done the Chester bit we did that early in the year so we went down to Chester and I went sort of straight on at Barbridge because that's where I came from, from Middlewich. It's just that I've got to be back to the River Weaver for the end of October because I'm being blacked. So um, as long as I get there for then, that's fine. Hello! This is the thing you see. When I'm stood there walking down the street or on my boat and I'm talking to you guys, on this little GoPro camera. When people look at you, they think you're a knob. <laughs> they think, oh, what a nutter sat there, chops into herself. You don't think that though, do you guys? Wait, wait. So this is where things started to get really, really busy. Oh, so that was so busy then. Um, Gareth had to slam on and I'm following Gareth so I nearly took him roughly from behind without him knowing. I was just so close and he's got his canoe anti behind but uh, I avoided it just so it's a bit of a scary moment then to be honest. Oh shit I'm alongside the canal now there's a boat coming. Yes, yeah, so this the secret of the Langothan Canal is either set off like six o'clock or late in the day. <laughs> when we came up, we weren't so bad. We uh, avoided everything, but these proper windy little bits, we're, we're meeting every single boat coming. But you don't care because everyone's in good spirits. It's like, oh my God, you know, a boat's coming, everyone's smiling and we're trying to sort it out. A little bit of narrowboat Tetris. Everyone's trying to sort it out situations happen how can we get through this as long as you're all going slow no one will ever do any damage Lord, yeah. it's busy here today so we've been up the Langothlin most of July and all of August and it's been all right and then suddenly when it comes to September and the kids have gone back to school it's the busiest we've seen it so we're doing a lot of slamming on at the moment. We're doing a lot of going around bends, having to see something coming and having to slam right on. So I just hope this one don't come, take me roughly from behind unexpectedly. Slow like 
like that, nothing happens. It's yeah. just we get there in the end, it all works out fine. Yeah. The good thing about living aboard your own floating home is you can just moor up and you're at home, get kettle on, put fire on, and everything's lovely. Basically now there's about six boats ahead of us that we can see visually and there's about six or seven behind as well. We're all going dead slow and we're going to be approaching St Martin's Locks again very shortly. So the queue there is going to be horrendous, they're waiting around. So we've decided we're going to moor up before the locks and then call it a day. <laughs> because it's just, it's very, very busy. But we're never in a rush, we don't bother us. We've done a bit of cruising today, that's enough. So we're going to moor up, get kettle on, I've got a big school order in that I need to get made up for the weekend. So I'm going to get to do some badge making, do a little bit of editing and just chill out for the rest of the day, I think. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's no point. And the rain's going to rain as well. So I don't want to be stuck waiting for locks in the rain if I can help it. So being born and bred in the country, I was always taught that if the cows are lying down, it's gonna rain. And it has actually been forecast rain today. But what other wives' tales do you guys know? What things like that do you know? Famous sayings like that? Let me know in the comments. Oh, oh, oh.